Hello, uh, praise the Lord. If you have a Bible, let's turn together uh, to the book of Acts and chapter one. Genesis, Exodus, Concordance, Acts. <laughs> chapter one and, and verse one, and it says this, the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to both do, somebody say do, and teach. Say do and teach. Before I get into this message, I just wanna uh, remind you, I know you know this, but I wanna remind you that Jesus didn't just have a teaching ministry. That being said, He was a great teacher. No one could teach like Jesus. I mean, the Sermon on the Mount. I mean, when Jesus would preach, they said, man, never a man spoke like this man. His words are spirit and their life. And He would preach. And I mean, things that didn't have ears responded to His preaching. He could teach. He spoke to a tree and it, it, it died. I mean, it was a powerful message. He spoke to the wind. Uh, he spoke to the waves and they submitted to the Word of the Lord. Jesus, uh, He could preach. No one could illustrate a sermon like Jesus. Jesus. I mean, he'd get preaching and he'd say, oh, it's just like those five foolish and those five wise virgins. He, it's like the, the wise man who built his house on a rock. I mean, Jesus could preach. He could pull you into His message and preach the Gospel with clarity and poise and anointing. And, and, and he, was, he was awesome. But Jesus' ministry didn't just stop uh, at the ministry of preaching. It was the ministry of doing. In other words, he'd preach and he'd preach the Gospel, but he'd also demonstrate the Gospel with supernatural power. He'd lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You'll never read of one person that came to him in faith that walked away sick. He healed them all, the Bible says. John says there's not enough books in the entire world to record the miracles that Jesus actually did. He didn't just heal people. He, he, he took authority over demonic spirits that came against people. He raised dead people to life. I mean, Jesus, He didn't just teach, He had a super supernatural ministry. And I wanna remind us this morning, whether you're here, whether you're online, that Jesus Christ, Hebrews 13, eight says, that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what He did 2,000 years ago on the shores of Galilee, what He did 2,000 years ago on the cobblestone streets of Jerusalem, He can do right now at Hills. He can do it right now in Bali. He can do it right now in Tokyo. He can do it right now online, Melbourne, right across Brisbane, right across Sydney. He can do it, why? Because He doesn't change. And I think sometimes we can easily forget that the power of God is as active now as it was when Jesus walked the planet. And whatever, I mean, we live in a world that, I think the world has, has, been, has been belted pretty hard, but I believe that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to us. And by faith, we can receive all the promises of God. Jesus had a teaching ministry, but He also had a doing ministry, a demonstration of the Spirit and of power. It goes on in verse two, until the day in which He was taken up, after He through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom He had chosen, to whom He also presented Himself alive after His suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during, 40, during the 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the Kingdom of God. And it goes on in verse four, and I'll stop again, but He says, and being assembled together with them. I will say this, one thing about church that's similar to Ikea is that uh, it might not come in a flat pack, but there is some assembly required. And if, if you're, people are watching from maybe all over the world and I know some places are very difficult, but in Australia, we're blessed. And I wanna encourage maybe some of you that are, are watching at home and you're in Australia, I wanna encourage you, find, find church again, come home. We need you in the building. You know what, statistically, your odds are better coming to church. Most people die at home in bed. So I wanna encourage you. Come back to church as a fact. I'm just here to give facts. But, but I, we'd love to see you. Why don't you come tonight? Be in the presence of God. Oh, I don't know. I haven't been to church since COVID. Why don't you come to a full on revival service? And let's believe God that His promises are gonna come to pass in your heart and in your life. In the Name of Jesus. Jesus is alive. Woo, man, that's good news. That's better than a poke in the eye with a blunt stick. That is good news. Jesus is still moving by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'll keep reading here. And, and being assembled together, He commanded them. Somebody say commanded. Do you say commanded or commanded in Sydney? Commanded. commanded. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. And we'll get right into the text now. And this is where I wanna speak from. But, but, but to wait for the promise of the Father, 
which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptised with water, but you shall be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they come together, they asked him, Lord, would you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive Power. Somebody say power. He says you receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, he went up. Now, Jesus, this is, this is the last thing that Jesus ever preached. This is the last, the last message Jesus ever preached. He, he, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem. Now, it's interesting that here we, we actually see in Scripture that Jesus commanded them. And, and this is the subject of my message. I'll give it to you in just a moment. But He commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. That's the Holy Spirit coming, getting on them, anointing them, the Spirit's power being released on the early church. And so He says, you, 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 you got to wait in Jerusalem. He commanded them. Now, I've grown up in church and I can tell you that that Every Christian I know agrees with the 10 commandments given in Exodus 20. Moses went up to the mountain, God gives him 10 commandments. He comes back down and he gives them all to us. And we all believe in the 10 commandments. Every one of us, you, you name a Christian. I mean, we're, we're, we're like happy Pentecostals here at Hillsong. But, but even, even the most conservative church person believes in the 10 commandments. I've yet to meet a Christian that thinks it's okay to covet his neighbor's ox. I've yet to meet a Christian that, that thinks stealing's okay. I mean, sometimes we might be resourceful but there's a fine line. But, but, the, but, but, but he, we've been given 10 commandments that in many ways are our rule of law for life and integrity and character. We believe in the 10 commandments. So when Jesus comes, he, he thought the commandments went well. So he thought he might add one and, and he's allowed, being Jesus, you are allowed to do that. And so in John 13, 34, he gives us a new commandment to love one another as he has loved us. Again, all Christians believe that that's what we need to do. If we're a Christian, we believe you've got to love one another. Uh, people even believe that in Melbourne. They believe it in, in, in Bali. They believe it in Queensland. Online, we all believe it. The body of Christ believed that we've got to love one another. And that one got good reception. So Jesus was pumped. So with the momentum of these commandments, He just rolled out another two. He did two in one. This is the first time we see two in one. I mean, it's, pre it's pretty awesome. He, said, he says in Matthew 23, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind and love your neighbour as yourself. My neighbour doesn't really love me that much. My kids stole her pomegranates. But <laughs> I love her as I love myself. I, it doesn't matter really, does it? I'll just keep reading. But here Jesus gives, we're now at 13 commandments. And just before Jesus ascends to heaven, He says, I've got one more. He commanded them. He said, go and wait in Jerusalem. You're gonna get filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but I, I don't know how we do this Christian life without the anointing of God's Spirit. Acts 10.38 says, God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed by the devil for God was with Him. Jesus, He, he modelled to us that supernatural ministry uh, can be done when the anointing of God's Spirit is on our life. And so if Jesus chose to operate under an anointing, how much more do you and I need the anointing to accomplish what God has for our heart and our life? I need the anointing. Do you know the anointing is a game changer in your life? Without the anointing, you can do some things, but when the anointing of God comes upon your life, you at home, right here at church, in the building, online, when the anointing of God gets on your life, you can go from here to here because God fills the gap between where you are and where you want to be and what you want to do. That's what the anointing does. What is the anointing? The anointing is God coming upon human flesh, empowering them to do what only He can do. So when the anointing's on you, you can do things you'll never do, be able to do. Why? Because it's God doing it in you. Greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. And he's, you know, to put it this way, uh, I, I, I love a, I love a uh, hot bread at a restaurant. You know when they bring hot bread and it's just hot and you touch, oh, it's hot, it's beautiful. And, and how, how many know it's good, but when you get the butter and you just get a little bit of oil on, you just, you just lather that thing. You just go, you just go. So, 
It's funny, some of you are sort of into the message before now, you're like, oh, and I can see your mouths watering a little bit. I'll go quick and we'll go to lunch. Ribs and rumps. Uh, <laughs> lathering up the... How much better does the bread taste when, it, when, it, when it's got oil on it? Because oil releases flavour. I mean, you get potatoes, good, but I like chips. I had chips the other day dipped in rabbit fat. Now, I didn't know the fat of rabbits tasted so good. I'm a fan of the fat of rabbits. It was unbelievable. And then, and then you get chicken wings and they're deep fried and you stick them. Oh, thank you, Lord. I feel the anointing. You, 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 you dip them in like ranch dressing with some bacon and different. You start, can I say, I can have like, I don't want mine to be free range. I want dirty chicken. I want <laughs> dirty chicken. Dirty chicken dipped in fat, dipped in. Why? Because it tastes better. Let me tell you, you and I, anointed by the Spirit of God, we taste better. Let's not be bland, boring Christians with a Bible big enough to choke a kangaroo. Let's be full of the Holy Ghost. Man, if you believe it, just clap your hands for two minutes. Not two minutes, that's a little long. That would get old. That's enough, stop. So Jesus, His final command is go into all the world, preach the Gospel. But then He says, wait in Jerusalem. Well, which is it? Is it go or is it wait? He says, I want you to go, but first I need you to wait so I can give you power to go. I want you to get full of my Spirit. I want my anointing to get on you. And you read through the book of Acts. They submitted to what Jesus asked of them. And if you read through the book of Acts, the power of God, the Holy Spirit fell on Pentecost. The Bible says, Acts 2 verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. That was very quick. As of a rushing mighty wind filled the whole house where they were sitting there appeared under them, cloven tongues like as a fire. One sat upon each of them. I love that there's there's a fire for every person, by the way. It didn't sit on one and two. There's fire for every believer. One sat upon each of them and they were all filled. Somebody say all filled. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak in tongues. The Spirit gave them the ability or the, or, or the utterance. In other words, they're gathered there in an upper room on Pentecost. The day that was Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost. That's why we're called Pentecostals. It's not all that spooky. You might be a visitor and go, I don't know, I don't know what this... Be- All Pentecostal means is we believe that that what happened on this beautiful day of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit was made available to people to to be upon them and anoint them and empower them, we believe we can have that now. That's what makes me Pentecostal. If the Holy Spirit fell at Christmas, we'd be Christmacostal. It's as simple as that. So so it's not complicated. Don't don't let the label, don't let the label stretch you out. I'm not Pentecostal because I go to a certain church. I'm Pentecostal because I got the fire of God on the inside of my spirit. Do I have any friends in the house that believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? And so all through the book of Acts, you will see different descriptions given by some of the different apostles and and some of the writings, some of the verses and different stories that give a, a, a description to the Spirit of God getting on our lives. And they're all a little bit different. So, and they show us a different facet of how God moves, how God touches people, how God ministers to people. And so here in the Scripture, we, we, we see through the book of Acts, there's probably more, but, but I didn't have a lot of time to study, so I found six. And so there's six different expressions in the New Testament that are pictures or... or uh, are referring to the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Spirit. And I, I wanna give you these six because they just show you that the baptism in the Spirit's more than just the gifts, it's more than just speaking in tongues. I speak in tongues, I love praying in the Spirit, but, but, but you actually realise how much God is actually at work when you get filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, I don't know about you, but, but I believe that every person who calls on the name of Jesus can be saved. At the end of the message, those watching online here in the room, in, in other campuses, everybody that's gathered, we're gonna pray a prayer for people to find Christ. Anyone that responds, you will get born again. You will leave different. Your, your eyes will be enlightened to the goodness of God and to eternity. You'll be saved by the grace of God. You'll go to heaven for eternity. It's gonna be the greatest day of your life. And for everyone that's saved, not only it can every person who calls on the Name of the Lord in faith gets saved, but also those people who are saved, if you by faith ask God for the baptism in the Holy Spirit, every Christian, without exception, can be filled with the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I don't know about you, I need the anointing of God. And so six different expressions in the book of Acts. I'd love you to write these down if you can. Number one, Acts 1 and 5, Jesus says you will be baptised in the Holy Spirit. Baptised in the Holy Spirit. Tonight there's baptisms in water. 
here at church. Isn't that awesome that we're able to do that stuff again? And praise God, they've actually, except we're not using water, we're using unleaded petrol. Uh, just anyway, that's, that, was, that was a little joke. And so baptism. So I think somewhere under here is a tank and people are gonna get in that tank and uh, they're gonna go in those waters. They're gonna get up. Their past is gonna be cut off. They're gonna come up in newness of life. And they're gonna tap in and partake of the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. I mean, there'll be a shout in the house. I, of all the victories we have as a church, I mean, Festival Hall, praise God for that. What a win, what a, an amazing thing. Those things are victories, but still the highest victory that everybody loves around here is when somebody gets born again, somebody gets baptised in water, somebody finds Christ and goes from hell to heaven, from darkness to life. Oh, it's good news. I can't wait for baptism. Baptisms, I may jump in the tank myself. It's been a while. I'm gonna wear, you don't call them bathers here, you call them togs or something. I don't know. What do you call bathers here? Doesn't matter. Not important. We're gonna keep moving along. Six, baptism. So baptism in water and baptism in the Spirit, they're basically the same. But they, 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 there are different elements, but it's the same principle. Baptism in water. You get in the tank and, 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 and the element you're baptised in is water. The baptizer is a pastor or a leader or a Christian. They're baptizing you. They're getting you under that water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and they pull you back up. And it's beautiful. It's powerful. It's a miracle. It's the power of God. And it's awesome. But baptism in the Holy Spirit, it's the same thing, just different element. The element's not water, it's the person, the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the, the baptizer goes from being a pastor. No pastor can baptize you in the Spirit. Oh, I can't baptize you in the Spirit. Your connect group leader can't baptize you in the Spirit. There's only one who can. And John the Baptist talked about him. There's one coming, his name's Jesus. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And, 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 and so the baptism in the Spirit is a supernatural thing. But when that concept was given, it wasn't given. And, and, and a word was made up in that moment. Jesus borrowed a secular term. And, and baptism is, 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 see in Aramaic, they had one way to say 10 things. In modern English, we have 10 ways to say one thing. So he, borrowed, he uses this word because he knew it was a concept people understood. So baptism, until Jesus and John the Baptist started teaching this, people thought baptism in this context, a boat's at sea and it sinks. They would say, we would say the boat sunk. They would say the boat was baptised. And the reason they'd say it was baptised is because the boat was in the water, but now the water's in the boat. Now, do you understand what I'm saying? Because the baptism in the Spirit is us. We're in the presence of God. You and I, we're in an atmosphere where God's Spirit, God's anointing is in the house. But here's the deal. That's a wonderful thing, but there's a deeper work of the Spirit of God. And that deeper work of the Spirit of God is when you go from being in the anointing to the anointing being in you. Now, now that's what baptism is. When, you, when we dye a fabric, because we do that all the time now, uh, is dyeing fabrics. I can't wait to get home and dye some Hessian. Uh, but but we, don't, we don't do that. We don't, we don't do that really anymore. But back in the day, they, they would get a fabric, they'd put it in coloured dye and that dye would be in there. They would say when it was done, it was baptised. How did they know when it was baptised? When it went from not only being in the dye, but now the dye is in the fabric. Can I tell you, that's what the anointing of God can do. We can be in this room. Three years ago, I preached here on a Sunday night service and it was such a privilege and it's such a privilege to get to do it again. I'm like a kid in a candy shop. This is like, this is like going to Graceland for an Elvis fan. This is awesome. And, but, but I remember I was sitting right where Pastor Nathaniel is and I'm worshipping God. You're singing, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. And I'm just singing, you're welcome here. Come fly this, la, la, la. And, 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 then, and then I felt the Spirit of God speak to me. It said, I know I'm welcome here, but am I welcome here? You know, sometimes we deal with corporate anointing. What about, what about you personally today? Are you gonna, you're in the water. Can the water, can the water get in you? Because that's how we go from coming to church to being the church. We take the power of the church with us and ultimately the power of the church is God's Spirit in the Name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Number two, number two, in Acts 1 and 8, He says, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, upon you. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me. You know, Samson, Samson in the Bible, like, Strong Samson, who killed 11, uh, sorry, a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. Now, I'm not violent, but 
if, if I had to engage in warfare and it was me versus a thousand people, I feel like the jawbone of the donkey would be the least effective of all the bones of the donkey. I don't, I don't really know how you, how you do it. I don't know how you hold it. I'd want, I'd, want, I'd want a leg so it gives me a bit of an edge. And so, but he had a jawbone and he killed a thousand men. So when we see photos, not photos, drawings, uh, <laughs> drawings of Samson. Yeah, there's actually some technology that we're just seeing revealed in Scripture. So he t- we see drawings of Samson. They look like Goliath. Now Goliath's like nine foot, ten and a half with his mother-in-law's socks on. And he's... He's big, and, and, and so everyone knows Goliath's big. So you see the drawings of Goliath, they make David puny, Goliath massive, accurate, very accurate. Samson, they draw him the same, but he wasn't that big. If he was that big, when he had his head on Delilah's lap, she wouldn't have had to say to him, what's the secret to your strength? It was a secret. It was about a covenant he had made with God, a vow to not cut his hair. The secret was not his muscles. He wasn't built like me. He, he was... He was <laughs> I know, it's, <laughs> it's just not true. I'm really not that strong, but, but I can bench press almost 15 kilos. And so, but you've, you've, you've got Samson, everybody thinks Samson's this massive tank of a man, but he wasn't. Delilah said, what's the mystery? That was the anointing coming upon him. Can I ask you a question? Let's talk about the music of Hillsong Church touching the world. What's the secret to your strength? It's not talent. I mean, there is talent. It's not ability. More than anything, it's anointing. There's, there's a well in this church that God has chosen to touch the world. It's a work, it's a mysterious work of the Holy Spirit. Don't get me wrong, the talent's unbelievable, but do you know something? When, when, I, when I'm facing a challenge and I put on worship from this church, it's not the talent that I'm going for. It's the, I, I need the oil that's in this house. I need, I need the, the oil that's on you when you're in the meetings and worshipping God. My prayer tonight is when we record fresh wind and I lead it. I'm believing God's gonna touch this world for the glory of Jesus. It's not about talent, Cass. It's about anointing. And I don't think Nathaniel misspoke. I think he was led by the Holy Ghost. And to be honest with you, I I, I actually think Dave Ware would be fine with that. (laughs) Holy Spirit upon, I'll give you another one, Acts 2 and verse 4. I read it before, they're all filled with the Holy Spirit. I love it. It doesn't just say that they're filled, they're all filled. I believe each and every one of us can be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said, because He has anointed me. Spirit of the Lord upon. Can I tell you when His grace gets on you, the weight, the glory of God. He says in in Luke 24, 49, He said it a different way. Luke says it a different way. Jesus saying the same thing. He says, go and wait in Jerusalem till you are endued. That's clothed with power. I'm gonna put a clothing of power on you. You'll be filled with power. And what that means is I'm gonna furnish and supply the inside of your spirit. And, and, and that's what being filled with the Spirit is, is a furnishing and a supplying for kingdom work. So you can see the abundance of God flow out of you. What is He furnishing you for? To pray for the sick. What's He furnishing you for? To see, see people set free. What's He furnishing you for? To see His grace extended. What's He furnishing you for? So your hands become His hands. When the hand of God is upon you, your hands are an extension of the hand of God. When you pray for people, my dad's an old healing evangelist. He'd say, look at your hands, David. I'd look at my hands. And he'd go, they're your instruments for the supernatural. They're your instruments. You can lift them to heaven, shift things. You can put them on the sick and see them healed. You can put them on somebody that's hurting and bring the comfort of heaven into their life. Why? Because you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Can I say, some people go, yeah, but when I got saved, the Holy Spirit came on the inside of me. He totally did. He totally did. He came, not only did He come inside you, He came inside you so good, you went from hell to heaven, from darkness to light. I mean, you got born again and you're as saved as you can ever be. The baptism in the Spirit doesn't make you more saved. You can't, speak in tongues doesn't make you saved. It can't contribute to your salvation, can't add to your salvation. You're either saved or you're yet to be saved. But here's the bottom line, being filled with the Spirit, it's what God does to save people as an experience to give you power to do what God's called you to be. But, but but here, here's the thing, Jesus breathes on His disciples in John. He breathes on them. That's blowing, He breathed. Ah! I was preaching, I went, no, do you know what? I'm not gonna tell that story, I'm just gonna move on. Jesus breathed on His disciples. Ah! Receive the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and they did. 
But that was under salvation. Then they go to the upper room and the Holy Spirit came upon them. And then they went and shook the world for the glory of God to the ends of the earth. They, they saw God do supernatural things. Why? Because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And I wanna encourage you, Acts talks about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's have, let's, I'll, give you, I'll give you another one, number four. In Acts 2, 17, Peter's preaching and he quotes the book of Joel. And he says, in the last days, says God, he says, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. That speaks of God's abundance. That speaks of God's power. That speaks of the fact that there's enough anointing for every good work. You might be sitting on this side and and you've been healed by the grace of God and somebody over here might be going, they've got their miracle, I haven't got mine. Don't be discouraged because if God can do that over there, the same Holy Spirit has enough anointing to turn your situation around. God hasn't run out. One of His names is El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. He's not the God of nearly enough. He's not El Chipo or El Povo. He is the God, He is El Shaddai the God of more than enough. Maybe you've come to the end of yourself. You don't know what to do. You should just look to heaven and say, this one looks like a job for El Shaddai. Only El Shaddai can do this. I I need something extra from heaven. I need some super on my natural. I I need the power of God. Oh man, this this will stir your faith. In faith, He says, I'll pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. You know what? One thing we all are in this room is we're all flesh. There's enough for you and me. I heard this story about a man called T.E. Lawrence. He, he's, you'd know, maybe know a movie, Lawrence of Arabia. He took some, so, so, some tribal leaders from, from, from the Middle Eastern part of the world. And, and this is in the early 1900s. And, and they were living from watering hole to watering hole. And tribes would live and die based on whether or not they would uh, have access to water. And so water was the most precious commodity. It was, their, it was their source of income. It was their source of provision. It's what sustained them. It's what gave them generational uh, abilities to keep their tribe going into the future. Water was everything they had. And so these, these chieftains uh, would, would, some have access, some wouldn't. So uh, T.E. Lawrence tried to show them how life was in England and in Europe at the turn of last century, to give them an idea uh, uh, maybe to broaden their, their, their ways and means to sustain, their, to st- sustain their, their, their tribes. And so he brings some chieftains with him to England. And, and, and this hotel in England didn't have running water. So that, I guess you'd take a, a, a pan of water to your room and, and that's how you'd... So, and, then, and, then, <laughs> and then he would take, uh, take them to Paris. So they went and saw all the sights of London. It was awesome. They went out every day and just saw London's way of life. So then they went to Paris. And when they got to Paris, it was a brand new hotel and this hotel had running water. Now, if you've been a, if you've been a, 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 in, a, in a tribe and your absolute number one most precious commodity is water, then when you turn on a tap and water comes out of that tap, you don't wanna leave. They didn't go to the galleries, they didn't go to the museums. Wherever, you, wherever you're watching right now, I mean, it, it's a pretty crazy thing. I don't care really where I stay, but I do like running water. I mean, that's, that, that's, a, that, that's really an everyday way of life. They saw this and they thought it was the most amazing thing. They're looking at this tap. And if you're in America, a faucet, and, and they, 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 they turn the tap and water comes out. We just go, turn it on, water comes out, praise God. But, but for them, they are now seeing the greatest blessing that their whole life hinges on is available at the turn of a tap. So when they go to leave, they stole all the taps and they put them in their bag. And T.E. Lawrence says, you don't understand. It's not the tap. The tap's connected to the pipe. The pipe's connected to the building, uh, to to the mains water. The mains water's connected to a reservoir. That tap is only as good as the reservoir that's feeding the tap. And and can I encourage you? I went to to Bunnings the other day. I was looking at some taps and I went to turn one of those black taps so you can pull the thing out and you can pretend to be a firefighter cleaning your wheat bix bowl and (laughs) going for it. You can get those ones that do the the, the, the bubble water and and then you can get the the ones that, that are like matte black and super bougie. And, but you know what? I turned them all on. None of them worked. And I thought, what good is a tap? 
that doesn't work. Can I encourage you? I don't wanna be a tap that doesn't work. I mean, we can look good, we can, we, we, we can, we can, we can have it all going on, but we've still gotta be connected to the outpouring of the Spirit of God. In the Name of Jesus, if you believe it, say Amen. Number, number five, if Sister Minstrel could come so we could close this message. Number five, the Bible says in Acts 10, 44, that while Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell. It's amazing to me that Peter preaching the Word is talking about God. The Holy Spirit falls in that room. You know that word fall is the same word as embrace when the father embraced the prodigal son and held him. It's the same word to embrace. One thing the Spirit of God does is He embraces you. The Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost. And and you know, in this room this morning, I'm believing God that you'll know His love. You at home, right across Sydney, right across Melbourne, right across Australia, Bali, Japan, wherever you might be watching, in your home, I'm believing God that you would feel the presence of God and you would feel the embrace of Jesus. You'd feel His touch. You'd feel His presence. You'd feel His anointing. Greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. I'm believing God wants to touch you. He's gonna fall. The Bible says when he, when he fell in that meeting, and I, don't, I won't spend too much time on it because I wanna tell you about my final thought, but this was in the home of Cornelius. This is when God's Spirit was not, not only available to the, the Israelites, he's now, he, he's now available to the world. It was the most historical moment in the book of Acts other than the initial outpouring of God's Spirit. And right here, Peter talks about it and he says, oh man, I was preaching yesterday in Acts 11. He says, the Holy Spirit fell. He goes, it was just like before. It was like when I, maybe, maybe for you, you'll be in a room like this and the Spirit of God comes and you go, oh man, God's doing something new. But it's just like I remembered when I was a kid at youth group or when I first got saved. And I feel like God wants to just stir a fresh anointing. Do you know, even as I'm talking, I feel His presence just coming in the room and He wants to touch it. And finally, the Bible says in Acts 1 and 8, I read it already, you shall receive power. We can receive the Holy Spirit. I wish I could give you a a, a quick synopsis of all the points, but I wouldn't remember them. But whatever they were, I pray they're a blessing. Baptism, the Holy Spirit falling, coming upon, receiving. You can receive, maybe here today, we just take a minute. Let's all stand. We're gonna finish the message. This is how I love us to respond. I love us to lift our hands up to heaven. Just with a receptive heart, whether you're here or right across the church, right across Sydney, in Brisbane, where, wherever you might be, at home. Lift your hands to God. If you're driving your car, just use your knee and lift your hands to Jesus. That's a joke. We don't want you to crash. What was the cause of damage? Church, <laughs> hold, hold the wheel, 10 and two, 10 and two. But right across the room, why don't you lift your hands to heaven? Because the greater one, the Spirit of God, is in the room and He wants to touch us. Some of you might be dry. COVID's just messed with all of our heads. And I I wanna remind you today, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is on you. The Spirit of God is upon you because He has anointed you. And right across this house this morning, the liberty, the freedom, the victory of God is available through His Spirit. And I'd love it if I could just pray for you today. I want you to open your hearts and receive. And don't just believe God for the Holy Spirit to be here, but let's believe God for Him to be here, here in us. And right across the room, there's an anointing. There's healing in the river of God. There's victory in the river of God. There's everything you need is in the power of the Holy Spirit. And Father, right across this house, I ask You to touch people this morning. Let the rain of heaven fill this place. Father, let the touch of God fill this room. Lord, we're so hungry. Lord, we're asking for Your Spirit to move in this house. Lord God, a fresh anointing at home, in Your car, in Your homes, in Your family. Lord God, wherever people are gathered, Lord God, in every church right across this nation, in Bali, Lord, let the, let the power, let the person and let the Spirit, let the, let, let the anointing of Your Spirit touch people and and fill people. Church, if you're dry, just let His anointing come on you. Do you know what? We're just gonna let the meeting breathe for just a minute. Let the rain of heaven just come. Don't be in a hurry. God wants to touch you. Right across the house is filling people. Just put your hands down for a moment. I wanna pray for people that may be sick in their body and you need a miracle. How many know that Jesus is a healer and is a way maker? 
There might be people with just small challenges. There might, there might be people in here at home, right across the church, then you need God to touch you. You need God to do a miracle. You need God to turn that thing around. I don't know where you are gathered right now, but if you are in need from something from God, you might be in the fight of your life. And I've heard Pastor Brian preach on this. He'd say, the facts might be you're sick. I've heard all of his old sermons. He'd say, the facts may be that you're sick. The facts may be that the doctors haven't given you a good report, but the truth trumps the facts. And the truth is, He's a miracle working God. The truth is, He's super natural. The truth is He can turn things around by His Spirit in the Name of Jesus. If you need physical healing in your body right now, would you stretch forth your hands toward God? We're gonna pray. We're gonna believe God for supernatural intervention from heaven. Maybe the enemies come against your mind. People's heads just haven't been the same in the last 12 months. I'm believing God's gonna set people free this morning. I, 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 yeah, doctors are great and I encourage, I go to the doctor all the time, but there's a doctor in the house and his name's a great physician. And, and, and why, why don't we let him do his work right now? We're gonna pray the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith, old school. Pray the prayer of faith. And we're gonna believe God. But this is what I wanna encourage you to do. If you're near someone, uh, just stretch your hands towards them. And if, you're, if you've been in church a long time, you're full of the Holy Ghost, I wanna encourage you. Let's take, let's take 30 seconds and just stir up the gift of God on the inside of you. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's stir up that river in the Name of Jesus. And let's believe God. Don't do it like at a two out of 10 volume. Get it up to a five or a seven. Let's, let's pray like it's your brother or your friend. I don't know if you're you're allowed to put your hand on people's shoulders with COVID, but if you do, no one's gonna judge you. Just, just do it well. Let's, let's believe God. We're gonna pray the prayer of faith. We're gonna believe God for the impossible to become possible. In the house, let's pray. Father, in the Name of Your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, according to Your Word, which doesn't lie, and by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Lord, I'm asking You right now, heal people. Set them free. Lord, we come against sickness and disease. We come against principalities and powers. And Lord God, let healing virtue fill this house in the Name of Jesus. Let fire fill the house. Let power fill the house. Oh God, we claim it right now in Jesus' Name. You know, if I went to Woolies and I needed wheat bix and they're in a high shelf, I'd reach up, I'd take it, put it in my trolley. Sometimes you just gotta have that attitude and when we lift our hands, we're just claiming the promises of God. We're just taking a hold of the grace that abounds. We're, we're taking a hold of miracles and breakthrough and answered prayer. Oh, today's your day. Just one more time, if you need a miracle, lift those hands, lay a hold of it from heaven in the Name of Jesus. We're gonna believe God for it right now. Father, do that work in Jesus' Name by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, I speak to cancer right now in the Name of Jesus and I curse it at its roots in Jesus' Name. Lord God, we declare the healing power of God in this building. Father God, come, come. Now, can we do one more thing? Everybody that lifted their hand and even those that didn't, we're gonna give God a shout of victory. And we're gonna, it's a shout of triumph. Let me be, wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. I'll tell you why, what's a shout of triumph? It's what you do when you've had victory. Now you might not feel the victory right now, but can I say, we're gonna just, let's just get old school. Let, let's just, tap into our, our, our inner Pentecostal. And I'd love it if right now we'd go, give God, it's by faith, a victory shout and thank Him for the promises of God and thank Him for His goodness. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise. 